Cactus Canyon was made in October 1998 and designed by Bally Manufacturing Company. It is well known as being the last traditional pinball machine by Bally Williams, as production was suddenly halted early to begin work on Pinball 2000. Because of the game's short development cycle, the code to Cactus Canyon was never fully completed. It lacks common features seen in many other titles, such as a video mode or a match sequence at the end of the game. Even with its shortcomings and a tragic end, the game has garnered a cult following. This is the history of Cactus Canyon. Players assume the role of a new sheriff of Cactus Canyon. The goal is to survive many confrontations with bad guys, save the damsel in distress that is tied to the tracks, seek a fortune in a gold mine, and help the citizens during a stampede. The table includes two flippers, two pop bumpers, four pop-up bad guy drop targets. The Bart brother figure moves and taunts players too. The main scoring strategy is to combine the showdown multi-ball with the gold mine multi-ball. This allows players to keep adding balls from showdown while cashing in huge jackpots and multipliers from Goldmine. Players work towards completing their Lawman badge to get to the game's wizard mode, High Noon. This about sums up the game's rules. It's simple enough for novice players, but more experienced ones may easily reach the end and find themselves moving on. Cactus Canyon was designed by Tom Copera and Matt Coriel. The team had developed a basic whitewood, but didn't have a theme yet. Sitting around the kitchen table, Matt's wife Stephanie came up with the name Cactus Canyon, sealing in the western theme. Originally, the game began without a formal design team, so the art, music, and dot matrix animations were all done as favors with the hope the company might use it for their final WPC game. A license wasn't chosen to allow the freedom for creativity. They also felt that getting approval would have slowed their workflow. Coincidentally, the Will Smith movie Wild Wild West was being developed and the team felt it could align with this movie. Originally, a set of saloon-type barn doors needed to be hit open, revealing a shot. Some of the prototypes developed still contain a test mode for this intended feature. There was also a large center ramp that divided left and right, but it was dropped as they couldn't get it to work correctly. It was also intended for beer mugs to act as drop targets and fall backwards, but because they were too small, they were instead put on rods like the frogs in Scared Stiff. The bad guy drop targets were intended to be made of clear, illuminated plastic. However, they weren't strong enough and kept cracking when the ball hit them. With advances in plastics today, this wouldn't be a problem. Because of the short time the design team was given, the only regret Matt Coriel had was a fairly shallow rule set. He claimed that a reasonably good player will see the end of the game much earlier than they should. Music and sound was done by Rob Barry. Having previously worked on Circus Voltaire, Rob said the team put a lot of time into making different versions of the game's various tunes. The team created 15 versions of the showdown theme. Originally, there was supposed to be a bionic bark feature that didn't make it into the final software. He had some good ideas and sounds for the modes, but ultimately never had time to fully implement it. About two or three people did all the voices in the game. There were two female voices, with one being a friend of Matt's and the other a professional voice actor. Rob also voiced the town drunk. Art was done by John Yusey. One feature that Matt wanted to include in the artwork was a lizard. He owned a shirt that had a reptile on it and thought they were super cool, so he pushed to have one in the art. The back box art changed from containing just a cactus to the help wanted sheriff poster used in the final production. Each game was supposed to contain a special collector's plaque made of cast aluminum numbered from 1 through 925. Unfortunately, the plaques were late arriving at the factory and many games had already been shipped. The plaques were shipped separately to distributors, many of which didn't forward them to the end customer. The large European distributor Nova received around 300, but didn't know what to do with them and simply threw them away in the trash. Miraculously, someone found them in the trash and put them up for sale. With the marketing slogan being, the West has never been this wild, the table only produced a lackluster 903 units. The table fetches high prices in the collector's market, 
with sellers citing its scarcity, humor, and legacy as reasons for the cost. In 2012, Eric Pripke finished Cactus Canyon Continued, a project that updated Cactus Canyon with an expanded and complete rule set, including new game modes and animations. The code is available for free online and requires a Cactus Canyon table, PROC controller board, and a laptop PC to run. The new code added super skill shots, a match animation, new multiballs, ramp combos, and added animations and more. The updated code includes references to original games including Medieval Madness, Monster Bash, and The Addams Family. A digital version of Cactus Canyon was once available for the Pinball Arcade before Farsight Studios' license to the Bally & Williams tables expired on July 1st, 2018. Visual Pinball, a community-run program, also features the table as well as the continued version. As of this video, a remake of Cactus Canyon is in development by the Chicago Gaming Company. The machines will boast improved lighting, toys, a reimagined color display, and, perhaps most importantly, completed code that's closer to the original development's team vision. The more expensive models will feature a topper that functions as a shooting gallery minigame. Enhanced software by ex-Stern Pinball programmer Lyman Sheets and Pinball player Josh Sharp will also be purchasable at a later date. Cactus Canyon, despite its limitations and shortcomings, continues to solidify its place in pinball. It is a forgotten classic and soon to be reimagined hit. Like a beautiful phoenix, Cactus Canyon rose from the ashes and continues to receive new life year after year. It's clear the fans love a good old western, one that you can continue to ride off into the sunset for years to come. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and would like more pinball history, make sure to subscribe and comment on the next one you would like to see.